Okay, Joshua and Ganu fight week. Has my view on the fight changed? No, it hasn't. I still think Anthony Joshua is going to win this fight decisively. I don't think he's going to have too much trouble. There might be a couple of hairy moments here or there. But overall, I think Anthony Joshua will be in control. And he will win this fight without any controversy. That's my prediction. Now, Francis Ngannou might be a guy that has an iron jaw. We don't know until we see him get hit consistently by Anthony Joshua on that chin to test it. Obviously, he's fought in MMA and he's taken head kicks and all kinds of stuff. But in boxing, when you're getting hit consistently and when you're tired in the latter stages of a fight, that's when your punch resistance can start to wear down. MMA fighters generally don't get hit in the head as much as boxers do. They might get hit very hard with kicks, as I've already said, but it's not as consistent. And so it's the consistent punching that wears you down and chips away at your punch resistance. So this will be the biggest test of Francis Ngannou's punch resistance, in my view, in this fight with Anthony Joshua. Now, some people just naturally have a better chin than others. You can get a guy off the street who's never had a professional boxing match, put him in the ring against a real good puncher, and be amazed at how good he takes the shots. He may take shots better than certain world-level fighters. Punch resistance is mainly in my view, in my experience, an innate thing. Yes, your punch resistance can improve with conditioning, getting used to getting hit, etc. But if you've got a glass jaw, no amount of condition will turn you into Oliver McCall or George Chavalo. Those guys just had naturally good chins. Perhaps Francis Ngannou is one of those guys we will soon see. And I talk about his chin because I'm not sure whether Anthony Joshua will stop him or not based upon that punch resistance. But what I am sure of is, as I said at the start, Anthony Joshua will win this fight decisively, without controversy, and people will look back at the Fury performance and say, wow, how did Tyson Fury struggle so badly with a guy who Anthony Joshua dealt with comfortably? Of course, we've already seen that with Anthony Joshua's last performance against Otto Wallin, a common opponent that he has with Tyson Fury, Fury, I don't want to say struggled, but he had an awkward night against Otto Wallin, obviously suffered that bad cut from a Otto Wallin left hand, and it went the distance. Whereas with Anthony Joshua, he just walked through Otto Wallin in, what was it, four or five rounds, and had no problems whatsoever. But styles make fights. Will Anthony Joshua's style be more of a problem for Ngannou than Fury's style was? In my view, yes. And the reason I say this is because Anthony Joshua is a sharper power puncher at long range and at short range than Tyson Fury is. Tyson Fury is more fluid. He's more slick. His movement is better. His defense usually is better, but he has been getting hit quite a lot these days. As he ages, his defense isn't as good as it used to be. And not that Tyson Fury was ever a heavyweight Mayweather. People exaggerated the effectiveness of his defense, to be fair. But overall, I'd still say it's better than AJ's defense. So Fury has certain things over AJ, certain areas where he's quite a lot better. But AJ has advantages as well. I think he'll be able to hit Francis Ngannou with very sharp counters, left hooks, right hands, potentially uppercuts through the middle when they're up close. I mean, for example, when have you seen Tyson Fury throw a lead left hook or a counter left hook? It's a very rare thing to see. That isn't a great punch in Tyson Fury's arsenal, but it is a great punch in Anthony Joshua's arsenal. As his new trainer, Ben Davison, has been emphasizing, Anthony Joshua is a really good counter puncher. Even the brother of his former trainer, Rob McCracken, in a recent interview was saying the same thing. Anthony Joshua is a really good counter puncher. This is something that kind of comes naturally to AJ. If you go back and watch some of his amateur bouts, he was really good at counter punching, especially with his left hook. I would say that AJ is a better counterpuncher than Tyson Fury. And I think Francis Ngannou will find that out the hard way on Friday night. So yeah, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm saying that Anthony Joshua wins this fight decisively, relatively comfortably. I can't count Ngannou out completely. Of course not. He's a big man. And if he lands with full force on Anthony Joshua's chin, I'm sure that Anthony Joshua will be hurt, possibly go down, possibly won't get up. But I'm banking on the idea that AJ will simply be able to avoid getting hit with anything too clean from Francis Ngannou, and that Ngannou won't be sophisticated enough to catch AJ with those kind of shots. Perhaps I'll be proved wrong, but I don't think so. I reckon AJ's got this, and he should. 
win this fight comfortably because he's in against a novice. Yes, it might be a novice coming from a combat sport, but a novice nonetheless. And he might be an outlier. He might be much more suited to boxing than most other MMA fighters. All this may well be true, but the years and years and years and years that Anthony Joshua has dedicated to boxing, honing his craft, fighting at the highest levels, surely is gonna count for something. He's not coming into this fight, from what I can see, as lackadaisical as Tyson Fury was when he fought Francis Ngannou. Anthony Joshua is more consistent physically than Tyson Fury, and he appears to be in a good state mentally. I think he gained a lot of confidence from the way the Otto Wallen fight went. Some people are saying he's working really well with Ben Davison, and I can certainly see why that would be the case, because Ben Davison has this very analytical mind, and he's very good at explaining things. He's very articulate, and perhaps that gels well with Anthony Joshua, who is meticulous in his thought process. And he needs things explaining to him. He's not the most intuitive guy. With that being said, for me, the jury's still out on Ben Davison. Because when Anthony Joshua beat Otto Wallen, that was a guy that he'd beat twice in the amateurs and a guy that he'd sparred countless rounds with in the pros. And by all accounts, Anthony Joshua had his way with Otto Wallen in those spars. Otto Wallen kind of inadvertently admitted it. It's much easier to be confident against a guy like that than a guy who you've either never fought or never sparred with, or if you did, you didn't have your way with him. Pause. <laughs> now, I think AJ's confident going into the Ngannou fight because of the way the Wallen fight went, but also because he's fighting a novice. And this is a novelty fight. On paper, this is not a serious contest. As much as Francis Ngannou is a powerhouse, I don't think AJ looks at him as being particularly skilled. And judging by what his trainer Ben Davison is saying, I don't think he does either. They respect his tenacity, his strength, his punch and power, his physicality, but I don't think they believe Ngannou is on the same level as AJ in terms of skills. And AJ is obviously strong himself, so they appear confident to me. And I think that that side, that team will get the job done. That's my take on it. Give me your take in the comment section below. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalog of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high-quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.